Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Mark Rick Show, brought to you by Williamson Automotive. Joe Zagacki alongside Don Bailey Jr. and University of Miami head coach Mark Rick joins us momentarily. The Hurricanes win their first game of the season, 41-13, over Bethune-Cookman. It was a good debut for the Hurricanes. It was, Joe. It was great to see over 50,000 Hurricane fans in attendance. It was uh, a lot of energy in the stands early, and more importantly, Miami ended the day on the high note with the big victory. Malik Rozier in his first start for head coach Mark Rick throws for over 200 yards and three touchdowns. Well, we talked about it all last week. We want touchdowns and no interceptions, and that's what he gave us. No interceptions on the day, wasn't sacked on the day, looked very comfortable running the football. And as we learned as we watched Malik is that he's, he's quite accurate. The defense got two turnovers. And the result of that was the turnover chain. Yeah, that's the, the biggest story in college football. I think that that's going to be on every kid's uh, Christmas list this year. But it's good to see Malik Young. We knew from watching him all of last year and then through practice in the spring and the fall that he has the ability to take it away, and he did. And uh, you, you look at what happened on the big hit by Carter. He knocked the ball free, creates another turnover. You're positive, you're positive two in that category, and that always leads to success. Canes will go on the road this week and play Arkansas State. They just barely lost to Nebraska, but they've won eight of their last ten games going back to last year. Yeah, unfortunately, I was very impressed with Arkansas State. I watched the Nebraska game, and listen, we know how well coached Nebraska is. We know that Arkansas State was the visiting team and how tough a place that is to play. They overcame all of that. They, they made some plays on special teams, and they are going to try and run 90 to 100 plays, which will try and set fatigue in on your defense. Hopefully, uh, fortunately, Miami's got enough enough layers of first, second, and third team guys that can help roll against that offense. But Miami's going to have their hands full. Great punt returner as well, and uh, one of the nation's leaders in sacks. All right, Miami defeated Bethune-Cookman last week. Let's take a look back at the highlights brought to you by U Health Sports Medicine, and we'll get you back in the game. Welcome back to the Mark Rick Show, brought to you by Williamson Automotive, Joe Zagacki and Don Bailey Jr. And we're now joined by the head coach, University of Miami head coach, Mark Rick. And coach, congratulations on the victory. Thank you. It's good to win. It's good to get uh, one under your belt and just see, see what you got, or at least have a better idea of what you have. Coach, what did you find out about Malik Rozier? What was, your, what was his grade yeah. for week one? Uh, overall, graded well. I mean, number one, he was very... Um, careful with the ball not so careful that he wouldn't throw it downfield I mean we threw balls downfield we took shots and he made some nice plays uh, on some deep balls and um, but you know he didn't do anything foolish with the ball and uh, you know I'm a big stickler on that uh, you know the ball handling and all that kind of stuff was outstanding now we did have that one snap right before the half that he wasn't ready for and it, it it's a situation where one of their defenders you know, barked out a cadence-type noise. 
-hmm. which is supposed to be illegal, but it's it's hard for an official to get. And uh, the center snapped the ball, reacted to the the, the defense defender's voice, and uh, you know, thankfully it, it hit it hit Malik. It's a good accurate snap. I mean, you've, you've seen some bad snaps where it go 30, 40 yards behind him and could have really been horrible. But um, overall, he he was fairly accurate. He made good decisions. He got us in the right run game. I think 100% of the time. So, and that, of course he pulled the ball out and ran a little bit, let people know you better at least pay attention a little bit to him. Coach, Daryl Langham came up, was a leading receiver in yes. the ball game. It was nice to see that. <laughs> a, a guy that's been here a long time, <laughs> caught a pass and had a great day. And then Kendrick, yes. who was out last year, right. he had a big day as well. Yeah, the, the two big men playing the, the spot where Amon would normally be, um, they made plays for sure. And uh, Langham has been, um, little by little, just getting better. I keep talking, you know, I always say, you're so big, play big, you know. <laughs> yeah. And he did, you know, he, and he, but he has, but he's been practicing that way. He's been using his body to shield defenders, and our quarterbacks are learning that uh, with Langham and even Cager, they're not necessarily going to run past everybody uh, that they go up against, but they will be, the, if you put the ball in the right position, they can shield the defender away, and, and very typical of what happened on the deep ball, uh, the defender's on the outside. He's fighting like mad to, to try to make a play, reach around, bat it away. He played it perfect, but he just wasn't as long as our receiver was, and, and Malik put the ball in, in, in a perfect spot. Uh, Mark uh, Walton did have 148 yards in the game, but uh, <coughs> you can see he was excited to run because he was running with uh, a lot of right. authority, wasn't he? Yeah, he, I thought early he was looking for contact. He just wanted to strike somebody, you know. <laughs> And uh, he's, he's a very tough, physical guy. And, uh, you know, part of football is letting people know you're there. And uh, he let them know. He, he ran a few guys over. And as the game went on, he started, you know, as they're breaking down, trying to, you know, brace up for this, this finish, then he started making a miss and getting even bigger runs. Coach uh, Herndon, uh, Christopher Herndon, had a catch in the game. and I mean, he's a guy that's going to be a part of this offense, but you seem to move yeah. him everywhere and anywhere. Yeah, he'll play the, the ball that he actually caught. He was a split-out receiver at that time, and uh, he was playing fullback a minute. He played, of course, the traditional tight end. And, uh, you know, so he, he can do all those things. He can pass block well. He can run block well. Um, uh, and he's, he's a good route runner. I mean, he, he had one that, Kind of went off his fingertips uh, one time um, that he probably could have had, you know, but it would have been a heck of a catch, but we've seen him make those catches. So, you know, we're, we're not – there aren't many plays, like I've said over and over, that's designed to go to this guy only. It's like – it's more of a, of a progression of reads. And, and if a defender – it's just like when we hit uh, uh, Michael Irvin Jr. out in the flat. I mean – Certain def defenders overplay this way, we'll go in this direction. If they hold off the curl, then we'll throw it in the flat. I mean, I don't know who's going to get it, you know, but if you do it right, you're going to throw it to the open guy, and that's what we want. All right, and when we come back, we'll talk about the Hurricanes defense as we continue on the Mark Rick Show right after this. Malik Young and woo, what's the hardware got a little jewelry <laughs> after the pick we got to figure out what's going on on the Miami bench we have to get to the defense and in particular the uh, talk of the the game talk of the town is the is the turnover chain <laughs> yes <laughs> you got two turnovers two we guys got to wear the chain yeah I didn't realize at the very end it you know when we knocked the ball out who was it uh, Amari Amari Carter yeah I didn't think it was a catch and a fumble I thought they were going to rule it an incomplete pass I'm with you on that one yeah and so in the end there it's like hey offense getting the game I'm like what they that was actually <laughs> yeah. a turnover which I was thankful for but uh, I really didn't know if that was going to be the deal and uh, you know fines got to wear the chain uh, after Malik Young, I guess got had a pick but uh, Manny coach Diaz told me about it <laughs> I just had, didn't see it. He goes, oh, oh by off. the way. He's like, oh, by the way, I got this chain, you know, and it's like if you get a turnover, you get to wear it. You know, it's pretty, he says, pretty gaudy. And I said, okay, well, that sounds good. I said, if it motivates the guys to get turnovers, I'm all right with it. And then, uh, you know, I did see it. And 
it, it's hard not to see. Yeah, it was it was amazing. It's gonna put uh, some pressure on you. We need a touchdown chain now. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it was fun, and uh, you know, hopefully, it does motivate the guys. I'm sure it will. And you know, I said I said we we used what Mr. T and Don Johnson to design it. That's right. It's about what it looks like, so it's fun. He, 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 Don Bailey wants to wear it. Oh, yeah. well, well, bring it in here. Try it out one day. The kids are convinced it's pure gold, you know. So I mean, I hate it when people are trying to deny that. <laughs> it, it, you know, well, we we just don't want anybody to come in there try to middle of the night try to sneak it out of here. But uh, it's not quite. Pure well, turnovers gold. are pure gold. I mean, if you the, the takeaways are <laughs> Amen. pure gold. That's right. Right. Played a lot of guys on defense. Oh, right. Yeah. I mean, I think we played every eligible guy that had pads on on defense. And that, that that's, was, that's a bunch. Yeah. And that was an offense. They did a pretty good job of uh, changing the tempo. Sometimes they were fast. Sometimes they took the clock all the way down inside right. five seconds. Sometimes yeah. they took it past. Yeah, Zero. a few delay <laughs> games. I thought our fans early on really made a yeah. difference on that first drive to, you know, get two delay games and and even I think a t right tackle flinched one time after mm -hmm. that. You know, three consecutive five yard penalties pushed him back. Forced them to just you know dink it and and get in, try to get in field goal range, um, but uh, you know, yeah they they were. When you looked at their roster, redshirt seniors, redshirt juniors, fourth year seniors, a bunch. I mean there might have been one guy that wasn't at least a four year player, in their top twenty two, and you, when you get mature guys, they're they're gonna. They're not gonna panic. They played a bunch of great. Teams over the years, and uh, they just lined up and executed. That's all you can say. Other than, I mean, that's all you can say. They 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 lined up. They had poise. They put their hat on the right people. They blocked well. They ran well. They threw and caught. I mean, what well, they hit complete like ten, nine balls in a row or something like that. Um, that's that's coaching. That's execution. They did a great job. All right. Up next, uh, we'll talk about. Hurricanes and Arkansas State that game coming up a 3:30 kickoff from Jonesboro, Arkansas. We'll continue on the Mark Rick show right after this. Welcome back to the Mark Rick show everybody brought to you by Williamson Automotive, Joe Zagaki and Don Bailey Jr. Of course, University of Miami head coach Mark Rick, the Hurricanes head out on the road this weekend, the first road game, uh, traveling to an interesting place, going to go to Jonesboro, Arkansas. Coach, last right. year it was Boone, North Carolina, Sunbelt team, another Sunbelt team, but a cozy stadium and a team that has a lot of really good players, a lot of guys that played at other Division One schools. Right. Uh, they line up as good as anybody you're going to play. They, uh, they got speed. They play fast. Excuse me. They play fast. They play physical. Um, they're very well coached. On offense, they like to go really fast, like a lot of people, but they go about as fast as anybody. Got a bunch of skilled players. Um, defensively, they play a lot of man coverage. They, uh, they, they give the appearance of being more of like a two-deep type of look, but in reality, those safeties are just getting ready to, to be, be in there and get in that run game and, and make hits. So um, it, it'll be a great challenge for us, I can promise you. There's special teams. I mean, gosh, even last game alone, they get a punt return for a touchdown. They get a surprise onside kick. Then they have an onside kick where everybody knows in the stadium they're going to onside kick, get that. Um, Coach Hartley and the rest of everybody who supports him, has got, they've got their work cut out for them. Which I was looking at their defense. They've got a one transfer was, one, I believe, the top defense alignment in the country a couple years ago, a guy named... D liner, he plays at defensive tackle, mm -hmm. and he was at Alabama for a couple of years. But that's a, a big part of their program is is bringing in guys yeah. that were big time Division One players, and they end up right. at Arkansas State. Yeah, I mean, you get a chance. Guys get a chance to uh, get a second chance sometimes, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, kids make mistakes, and it's not always that type of situation. But um, you know, every once in a while, there's a guy that. For whatever reason, leaves a program and might be looking for more playing time or whatever it may be, and uh, they get a chance to go somewhere where they're going to get coached and, and play some huge games. And they already played a big one in Nebraska and just about knocked them off. And now they're getting ready to, you know, try to knock us off in their home court. Coach, also road game. You're taking a bunch of new kids out on the road, so to speak. I mean, they're right. fighting to get on the plane last week against right. Bethune. 
Right. And uh, that, it'll be a good experience for them too. Well, I hope it's a good experience. Um, we certainly need to live through it. Um, we start out every camp with our nonverbal cadence. That's the big thing. I mean, the offense gets affected mostly in an away game because that's when the crowd is the loudest. That's when you're trying to operate without being able to hear each other, basically. You know, when our defense is out there, they're, they're probably be pretty quiet for their offensive team. So the defense, they, they, the defense has more trouble hearing at a home game than an away game. So, uh, you know, we've got to get good at that nonverbal cadence, that uh, ability to communicate without actually hearing each other. Or if the QB says something to the center and guard, maybe the tackles may not hear it because it will be loud. And sometimes you just got to communicate down the line, make sure everybody knows, you know, what the play is or if we're changing a play or what the blocking scheme might be. Uh, last year when you went to uh, App State, uh, I think that was the, maybe the biggest event uh, in Boone. Uh, in a long time, and uh, the crowd was great. You hit him with an 80-yard touchdown right off the bat. And it really took a lot of the wind right out of him. Uh, do you think it's important to be a front runner in a game like this? Or? Well, starting fast is big. Um, somebody they do. I don't know what they call them, metrics. I don't know what they call this stuff. But they stat people. They they give you stats. And uh, I think the stat. There's some stat out there that. Whenever a coach Rick team, head coach uh, Rick team scores first, they win 83% of their games or something crazy. Oh, now we need to find that stat. <laughs> yeah, wherever it is, you know. So it's like, hey, start fast. That's important to start fast. But, um, you know, even when you think about what happened with UCLA and Texas A&M, I mean, mm -hmm. Texas A&M yeah. started fast and had a monstrous lead. And, but who finished? I mean, you got, you got to finish well as well. Coach, uh, last step of preparation, take us through a road game week versus a home game. Uh, I think the biggest thing that will be different for us, again, is going back to the nonverbal cadence and, uh, and then creating as much crowd noise as we can on a Thursday and, and just practice where you can't hear. And uh, that's a challenge because you're trying to get the scout team lined up in the, in the loud. And, and if you have to repeat a play and you're trying to say why you're repeating the play, it's hard to. So you got to have somebody who's ready to turn the volume down and turn it up. Just like, you know, when you, if you get close to the line of scrimmage mm -hmm. and you're communicating. And it's not like the crowd's screaming every second. They, they pick their shots, you know. And uh, red zone, uh, goal line. Third downs will definitely crank up the noise. Well, I think it's going to be quite exciting. It's going to be a big event in Jonesboro. Their biggest crowd was uh, 31,000 plus against Middle <laughs> Tennessee. Uh, I imagine uh, they're going to break some records and uh, they break will. all the seams in, in that stadium. Yeah. It'll, you know, 30,000 can get loud enough where that's you right. can't hear, yeah. and that's all that matters. And people say, well, how loud is a place? To me, I judge it. If it's loud enough where you can't hear, it could be times 10, it doesn't matter, you still can't hear. So 30,000 can do it, I promise you. All right, Coach, very best of luck, thanks uh, for joining us. All right, thank you. For Don Bailey Jr., I'm Joe Zagacki. We'll see you next time, right here on The Mark Rick Show. So long, everyone.